Hello, welcome to the Studio Talks. My name's James Swift. I'm Josh McNaughton, and our guest today is... Georgie in the right house. Hey, Georgie, are you okay? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm cool, thanks, guys. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm, I'm all right. How are you doing in the lockdown, and what advice do you have for people? To be honest, I've not done too bad in lockdown. I had no choice. I broke my foot in uh, February. It wouldn't mend, so basically it came out of casts three weeks ago, so the whole of lockdown I've had a broken foot, so I haven't been oh able God. to do much anyway. But, um, it, uh, yeah, I've had difficult days, but like much like probably everybody else does. So what I tend to do on, uh, you know, days that I was struggling with, I, I just tried to keep my mind busy, focus on something else. I tended to go rooting around in my garage for junk that I could upcycle and stuff like that. And come out with some great things out. And if you stood too long in our house during the lockdown, you got painted. I was just painting everything <laughs> that got in the way. But um, yeah, it has been tough as well for some, some people because it just kept going on, didn't it? Never seemed mm. never ending. And to be honest, just over the last weekend, we had to go and get my daughter from uni pack all the stuff up and it was quite scary because we would go we went out and it's still a bit scary i think going out and getting used to being out again yeah just refocus your mind so you're not dwelling on the bad day you're having or something like that so read or do some art or play some music or just mm. listen to music really and it takes the focus off that how have you handled it all right it's a ride yeah it. exactly it's one day will be really good and then the other, i'll just be like right today is the day where i need to not try so much to do everything think at once is that sense? yeah because that, that's what we tend to be doing at first did you find that you were going oh yeah. I, i've got loads of days and you're trying to jam everything in because you didn't yeah. really know how long it was going to last did we so but then as the weeks went on you thought oh i'll just do that tomorrow now yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. and there were some days i just just couldn't be bothered getting dressed just walked around in pajamas all day yeah um, i made myself get dressed every day just to that's good yeah just in case that's really yeah. good but I, did, I at the start of lockdown i was walking like going out every day doing like I mean, it was ten thousand steps i was doing a day just Brilliant. to keep my mind active and just get out the yeah. house yeah i, I tend so. to walk a lot but obviously i couldn't because of my foot you see so that was frustrating as well because the weather was so good wasn't it to go mm, yeah, uh, walk things. but that's really good josh to, as again that refocuses your mind doesn't it if you're mm. struggling just get out there and have a little walk in the nature and stuff like that. How yeah. did you get involved in the studio? Well, originally, the first experience we had of the studio was Access All Areas, was it? We took the kids there, my two children, to um, get involved in the music thing there. So my son's a drummer and Mia, my daughter, was playing. She played, she plays piano and she was just got a double bass then. She'd just started doing bluegrass music. So we went to Access All Areas and that's our first experience of it. But as the studio as it is now, I've known Louise for many years through the Brindley Theatre, uh, the visual arts officer there, Louise Hesker. So Louise would ask me uh, to come and do workshops or get involved in community projects she had going on years before she started at the Brindley. And then obviously when she started with Lucy, she asked me down to do the workshops and other projects then, and that's how I got involved as it is now. And I've known Jane, I've known Jane for many years. I used to work do some artwork with her when she was in hits. So I've known Jane for a long time as well. Yeah. Um, so what is your history with music? My history with music isn't that exciting, really. I've always wanted to play an instrument, but when I was younger in school, uh, like the early, late, eight, late 70s, early 80s, uh, it wasn't a thing you were, your parents encouraged and stuff. I think the most I got was a recorder. And I had this little recorder and I could go, play Go and Tell Aunt Sally on this recorder, right? Go and Tell Aunt Sally, most like uninteresting song ever. Um, mm. And then that was it. And then about um, 15 years ago, the kids bought me a little sparkly pink ukulele, you know, one of the little kiddie type ones. Mm. And it sat there for about three years and I just kept looking at it thinking, I've got to do something with that. I'll either stick it on the wall as an ornament or I'm going to start to play it. So um, there happened to be some uh, lessons going at the Brinley. Uh, a little group started up there. So I went down with my little uke and that's where it started. So that was about 13 years ago. Then all the group developed and got bigger and bigger. And then we, we started our own ukulele group, you see. And that went on for quite some years, but then it got all a bit stale. It's very political mm. then ukulele groups, you know, there's loads <laughs> of politics going on there. Yeah. So I just wanted a different direction. So I asked Gareth and Pete, who were in the ukulele band with me, 
to come round the house and jam. And then uh, we just kept meeting up, jamming, and that's our What's Up Dot formed, which is the band are playing now. I always wonder why we haven't got a studio ukulele band. I think that would really be fun. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, maybe you should set one up. We should set one we up, should shouldn't do. we? We should definitely yeah, do it, that. I mean, when we played the ukulele in the ukulele band, it was great. I loved it for mm. years and years. And um, we'd go and do all the care homes and they just love it. You know, the care homes just love it. Exactly. You're brightening up the day and everything, you know, and it's just a bit of fun. And it's not about earning money or doing that. It's just going and making people happy with this little instrument. We did. Mm. We used to do the vintage rally and things like that. And, it's just really, it was really good fun. Mm. I just don't think you can have a bad time while either listening or playing ukulele. I just think no. it's always, it's always a really nice experience, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a happy little instrument, isn't mm. it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, my mate wrote a song on his ukulele about failing his um, exam, final exams in uni, and it's still a very cheery song. You know, he's <laughs> on about just plunking out. <laughs> I want to. Yeah. It cheered him up, it's cheered his failure up, yeah. Oh, bless him, bless him. Yeah, so it's good. Mm-hmm. Really good little instrument. And yeah, definitely. A lot of, a lot of um, you know, like, uh, top musicians started or have an have a underlying passion for the ukulele. Definitely. The, the, yeah, because uh, I know that uh, Megan Trainer, she rather than lug a guitar about which quite often just takes a little ukulele and writes the song on there and then moves it onto the guitar then because mm. it's so portable isn't it yeah so definitely tiny. definitely yeah yep okay. that's how we know to move on to the next question when James yeah, goes. If I go, yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> how do you write a song as, how do you write songs as a band as a band well funny enough in the past when we first, we've been going for about three years as a band and gareth obviously had all these songs written and waiting to be used and stuff like that. So he's brought this music gen- normally to the band and we've played them and we've contributed to like changing them around a bit and stuff like that. But during the lockdown, we've actually started writing them together, you know, as a, as a band. And uh, Gareth had this tune he, he's been wanting to play and bring into the band, but it had no words. So I have a little book of, um, words that I just write down every now and then. Never do anything with them. They just go in this book and then they're just in an emergency. So we delved into the book and we've just um, written our first song all together as a band. So we've combined the music and all different lyrics, changed the composition around it. I find by extension of the what I just said about ukulele, I think What's Up Doc is one of those bands where you can't you can't be in a sad mood while it's playing while while you're performing because uh-huh. it's. Yeah. It's always very um, positive and stuff like that. Yeah, um, even because even some of the songs, they are quite, um, there's one called Slate Dust and it's quite dark because it's about mm. our granddad, you know, when he's, he got um, emphysema and all like that because of the slate dust and thing. But it's still a dead nice, it's still an yeah. upbeat tune, you know what I mean? So it's really good, yeah. The one that's always like, I'll, I'll be doing literally anything else. And in my head, um, I know I shouldn't drink, but I do. Just will just oh, yeah. pop in my head, and I'll just start singing it. Um, um, really, oh, no. ever, our songs are about drinking because at the moment we're just doing a, a cover of Chardonnay, and it's just literally <laughs> about the wine Chardonnay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, I think it was written especially for me. <laughs> but yeah, it is the the, the yeah. We like to be upbeat as well. We don't hmm. like. Uh, yeah. I don't see. I think when you perform, if you perform in an upbeat manner, it just brings joy to everyone. Doesn't Definitely. It? I mean, no one, no one really likes. I mean, whenever I play a sad song, I always have to go. I'm really sorry. This is a sad song, but it's going to be okay. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll bring it back up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'll play a happy one in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> there is um, situations where they do fit in anyway, don't they? Yeah, you definitely. Can't be happy all the time because mm. the life's not like that is there life's sort of no. got ups and downs all the time so they, 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 there is there is times when them sort of songs are needed as well mm. so yeah. as well as do music you also write poems um would you like to read a poem for us yeah i could read a poem we did um on the poetry social yesterday didn't we mm. and then um, the it was what was it something that brings you down and then picks you up again or something. Yeah, I'll read that one. So that one, uh, what I I did yesterday, is called Inner Strength. And it's, as you grow, you yearn for support. Each day you try harder and harder. Nothing is good enough. Nothing is noticed. 
your being is oblivious in the lives of others. At some point, realization sinks in. You are searching in the wrong place. Find that inner strength you have and direct your beauty and freedom to where you want to be. So apparently that's um, a blank, a blank verse because it doesn't rhyme and it has certain syllables and stuff like that going along. So um, I always find that yeah. with poetry where I think sometimes it's, it's braver not to make it rhyme because it mm. rhyming can not often be like, here's your welcoming like to, into poetry. Whereas when it doesn't, yeah. it can, you're allowed to be more open about yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and more abstract you can be, can't you, with poetry? You can cut, suddenly just cut it off and then that's it. But if you were writing a song where you just cut it off, it wouldn't work kind of thing, would it? I find no. it really hard to write lyrics for a song without rhyming. Mm. And I'm, trying, I'm, I'm trying to write, write one without it rhyming. I think it's hard to do. Well, it is for me. What was the overall experience of metronomes and what was it like to act as one of the lead characters? And metronomes, I just loved it. I loved everything mm. about it. Um, Louise did uh, amazing at directing it. She's so skilled and Definitely, she just knows yeah. the stuff. Yeah, just knows her stuff really well. And I just, I, I, I've been in theatre groups and things before and like amateur dramatic groups. Um, but I've never done improvisation, so I just loved the... When she said, when Louise said at the beginning, oh, we're just going to improvise, I was like, oh my God! I was like, so scared, yeah. because I've never done anything like that before. But I just absolutely loved um, the improvisation, and uh, each time you did it, you kind of knew where what you were going to say, but something different come out each time, you know? Yeah. And, and then it's having to pay attention and bat off what the other person's saying because he might say something or she might say something different than what you were expecting anyway. Having the lead part, one of the lead parts, it, it, it just it just helps to uh, build your confidence up, you know, for yeah. anything else you do in future. And I, I know a lot, a lot of us gained a lot out of metronomes, especially Leon. Remember Leon? You just yeah, watched yeah. how developed and became more and more confident each time. Definitely, he yeah. practiced it and he was great at the end. Yeah, really good. Yeah, it was no, just I, great, a good, really, good experience. Which one would you say is easier to do, one with a script or one that was improvised? I am quite, I'm not blowing my own trumpet, but I am quite good at learning lines, you see. Mm. Stuff. But some people struggle with learning lines and they have like a block with it. So an improvisation thing might work better for them, but it is, again, it's tough thinking on your feet as well. You know, practice one, you've done your rehearsal one day, and then the following week you rehearse again, and the lines are different. So it's just being able to think. So they both have the, the um, difficulties, I think. So it depends how, what your approach yeah. is easy to, you know, what you find easier, I suppose. I don't think there's, you could say one's easier than the other, because mm. some people, as I say, are great learning lines, others struggle with that as well. I know um, Gareth, he won't mind saying, um, he, he, he writes his own songs and still can't remember his own words, because Gareth and Pete both sing our songs, and um, it, it, Gareth will sing a song with words, and Pete will go, you keep saying this word, he goes, all right, I'll remember next time, and then it's say mm. it again. And in the end, the song change, we'll just go with Gareth's words. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because um, it keeps saying it in, and that's how it happens, doesn't it? Mm, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, getting a bit closer to the studio, because you obviously do uh, like a sort art days. How did you get interested with arts and crafts? I've always um, done art right from school. But, um, again, it was, school was weird years ago. Uh, kind of like, you know, in the top academic sets things, you had mm. no choice to, you could not choose any of the arts as your options. You had to stick to your academic English, math, sciences and stuff like that. Um, so I had no choice. I couldn't choose um, art as an option to take or mm. home economics as it was then, cookery and things. So I, when I got to old enough, uh, I think it was 15, 16 to go to night school, I did my GCSE or O level as it was then at night school in Witness above the library, the art department there. And I then went on to do my A level there. And then I went to the, the art college in Northwich, the Mid Cheshire School of Art and Design. But I had to all do that my own route. School wouldn't back me to do that because you weren't in that category to be able to take the arts, which was dead mad really, because that's what my interest was in. So then I went, so I, went, uh, I went to art college and then I left after a couple of years. Put it aside because 
I just put it aside. Mum kept going, get a proper job, get a proper job, you know, like that. And so I ended up um, getting proper jobs. Uh, and then I picked it back up again when the kids went to school. And I used to volunteer to go into school and do, help with their art and their displays and anything they wanted to do in around school. And that's when I picked it up again. Um, I got in, uh, someone put me on to Louise Hesketh at, at the Brindley. And then she was looking for someone to do after school workshops and then that's it I just took off from then and through word of mouth and reputation I started working a lot with schools and things like that so I've always been interested in art and you definitely have like a you're very good at doing art workshops because I think that's a I think it's one thing to be really good at art and then another to be able to teach it if that makes sense and you do a very good job of that as well um yeah. at, the, at the various <laughs> art workshops we've done yeah um, thanks for that um James because um you know, like I might not be the greatest artist, I admit that, but um, I, I, I tend to find ways where you can break it down and it's accessible then. So, you mm. not you, you know, people who are not confident or aren't uh, the greatest artist, there's an approach you can take. You don't have to be in competition with people and uh, art's art, isn't it? And it's very it's definitely. I think, I think that's the thing with art where it's, I think it's just a, a, a way of expressing yourself does that make sense as opposed yeah, to it is and bad. if you can put if you can write your name or you can put a line on a piece of mm. paper with anything you can make art exactly. and, uh, and, and as i say it's subjective so what one person likes another person won't so nothing is wrong in art and um breaking them barriers down is needs to happen you know so people can just express themselves really, really? yeah are we moving on? Or... Uh, yeah, sorry, I forgot to say, yeah. <laughs> what advice would you give to people who want to do arts and crafts but don't know where to start? Yeah, a good starting point um, are, you know, local art groups or local craft groups. And mm. they're either, you can get them where just a group of people meet up socially and um, bat ideas off each other or learn techniques from each other. Or you can get tutor-led ones, which um, they'll give you an insight into different approaches to art or different techniques or different artists and that or there's there's magazines out there so you can subscribe to uh, a magazine such as society for all artists the saa and they mm. do a i think it's a bi-monthly magazine and it gives you step-by-step -step tutorials in there um different ideas materials you can buy the great magazines are this for a good starting point and um that they even give you like holiday art holidays you can go on and things like that so yeah local groups and um magazines subscribe to an art magazine would be a That's good fun. starting point oh nice yeah, my mum used to go to like um, an arts and craft group in the library oh yeah my, my little sister at the time but my mum only went to like set chat to people but she did take from it like she ended up learning how to sew from there and and she, oh, she had like cool. a side business when she was because of what she learned in the place yeah, yeah brilliant yeah yeah well it is you can learn i think people get intimidated by going to art groups because i think they think oh god they're going to be dead good you know they're going to do it but it doesn't matter exactly. as long as, as long as you enjoy it and you're producing a work you're happy with or even just the process of producing work what it doesn't matter what the end product looks like if you've enjoyed the process of getting to a piece of work then that's all it's it's about, isn't it? That's all it's about. Definitely. The only um, I was saying this in Meg's one the other day. The only times I've ever done any form of like art has been just to. I mean, I'm literally holding the canvas. Um, <laughs> Ready to show you. This is the best, the best picture you'll ever see in your life. Go on, let's have a look. <laughs> cool. A, is it like a? It's a. It's a mountain. Looks like a moustache. <laughs> Looks like a moustache. My son's moustache at the moment, it looks like. He shaved off his beard and got this moustache. Mm. Well, we went to um, a museum, uh, MoMA, in New York, and it's, it had a dot, like, a, like that, just a little black dot in, on, in the middle of this big canvas. And my husband's like, what is that? What is that? And it's in MoMA. <laughs> I can do that. There you go, you could. Mm. Definitely. <laughs> so, uh, but, like, the only times I've ever done it is, like, if I'm really stressed out and i'm like i need to just do something to take my mind off everything um yeah have you have you got pictures have you done 
other pictures or is that actually yeah so so um i i went through a phase where this was the second um because i've got i have got canvases like blank canvases all around my room <laughs> um i am gonna eventually do them but it's like um i went through a phase i think it was like week two or three in lockdown i, I had like three or four essays to do so like i made like uh i did a penguin i did a cactus and i did, yeah, cool. did, a, I did a dog <laughs> <laughs> great but it it can be anything can't it it can mm. just be um either just getting old bits of magazines or paper and sticking them on all different ways there's a piece of art exactly. you know and i mean there's an artist jasper johns he he basically used his background was paper newspaper and stuff like that and mm. then he'd uh, he'd treat it with some gungy stuff or whatever then he'd paint his flag or his target on top but the, you know just the piece of collage with the paper is a piece of artwork exactly, as well yeah. exactly mm. and if it's just um stimulate your mind or are you using it as a distraction from any stress you're having great yeah, definitely yeah i think that is that's one thing in lockdown where i would say if you are getting stressed out just get a pad of paper or something to draw something um, yeah. well I did, I did one of the workshops didn't i on the um the, and it was zentangle art and it's an art therapy form so if you get stressed you do this kind of it's it's basically doodling but in a focused way so you know exactly what you're going to write or put down on the next line and stuff like that. So that's a good way to stress relief. Uh, Zentangle on. Yeah. That's brilliant. Um, so where can people find you online and uh, where can people attend your arts and crafts sessions, obviously when lockdown is over? Yeah, at the moment, um, the uh, sessions I've got going, uh, we're at the studio. So uh, I'm sure the uh, the kids art space art sat art day will continue yeah this is loads go on it's great sat art day um because you have the you've got the art and then you've got the tam tambourine tarts haven't you the uh creative writing and the singing so it's a brilliant morning for the kids it really and is, then, isn't it? yeah really really good fun i i go home singing them tambourine top songs no, and singing no, them same week. same <laughs> Yeah. In fact, I, I want I want Jane to do an adult one because it's a great one. Really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is like adult tam tambourine tops. Uh, the, the Monday one was the adult art space, which was on a Monday, uh, half four till six. So whether that will continue, you have to keep an eye out on the social media sites for the studio, and then that may continue again in uh, when we get back in September. But there are all the videos on the. Uh, the, Wit the Studio Witness YouTube page. Uh, so there's lots of tutorials on there for adult art and, boat and kids art as well. I'll make sometimes, sure to put that in. Yeah, sometimes I um, love doing the kids projects. So mm. just because it's a kids workshop doesn't mean an adult can't go. Oh, and definitely. Do it. And definitely. vice versa, you know. Um, yeah. So yeah, or then if anybody wants to contact me, I'm on Facebook, Georgina Ridehouse, or email georgina.artbox at gmail.com. Cool. Thank you for, for doing this today. It's been absolutely brilliant. Oh, um, I really enjoyed it. And it's been uh, the, the great what you're doing, guys. It's mm. really, really good. And every, it's been great that the studio's kept things going. And I've been really honoured to be part of it all. Yeah, Definitely. Nice. like it's it's weird because we were saying this in the the catch up the other day where it's it's mad that we weren't doing so much online to begin with. Like I feel <laughs> like it's a completely different uh, community outside yeah. of yeah. the studio Is itself. You, I mean, you do because you get um, there's some people who can't make the times when the sessions are on, and there's some people mm, yeah. that. Um, aren't in the mood to come out that day, you know, for various reasons or whatever. So they've still okay. got a port of call, haven't they? If, you, if things are online and um, they can see the, our faces and um, still feel involved, really. So they're not, if they've left it for a while, they're not a stranger mm -hmm. having to come back. They've still had some uh, participation online. Yeah, it's been really good. Right. Um, thank you again. Um, and I'll, I'll see you soon. Yeah, see you. Thanks, James. Thanks, Josh. See you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.